What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Art of Photography. Today is Q&A day, and I've got some really good questions to address, so let's dive right in. Creston Lee writes, I know you prefer not to talk about your own work and you focus on showcasing others, but what is your first memory of when you fell in love with photography or even music slash arts in general? There was a very specific moment when I not only fell in love with photography, but I knew it was something that I wanted to do. And I was about eight years old at the time. And just to back up a little bit, I was very fortunate in that I came from a very artistic family. My father is an illustrator, my mother's an interior designer, my sister's a graphic designer. And I came from a household that not only promoted creativity and the arts, but my parents, most of their friends were in the arts. And we had one family that we're still very close with to this day. And this gentleman's name was Greg Booth and he was a photographer and we would go to their house for dinner we would get together we, we were very good friends of theirs and I remember going over to their house and I knew that Greg was very successful and he had quite an upbringing and study and education behind him at one point he was Arnold Newman's assistant in New York and this would have been late 60s early 70s and on their wall of course I knew what none of that meant at eight years old I just you know knew they were cool and I liked going to their house and I knew he took pictures for a living so we went over to their house and he had signed by Arnold Newman one of the prints of the famous Stravinsky portrait, the B-flat portrait of Stravinsky sitting at the piano. And I remember being fascinated by this. And every time we would go over to their house, for whatever reason, it would catch my eye. It was something about it being black and white. I had no idea at that point in my life who Stravinsky was. Um, but I knew he was a musician, obviously sitting at a piano, but there was something just so stark and simple and beautiful about that piano lid and the angle and the way the lines worked and the negative space and how that whole photograph was treated. And it was always fascinating to me. And that photograph and seeing that at the age of eight was pretty much the moment where I became very curious because I would then ask Greg about that. And he loved to share stories about Arnold Newman. They were very close up until Newman died. And uh, Greg went on, he was an enormous mentor of mine. Um, we worked together as I grew up and I have no idea. Uh, Greg passed away a few years ago and I don't know that I ever expressed that to him or if he knew that when he was alive, but that's something that there in a day goes by where I don't think of that guy and probably that picture. And the other thing that's interesting about that picture is not only was it kind of what sparked all of my interest in photography, but it is something that I have grown to appreciate as I get older and more serious about it, about the implications of that photograph, the whole idea of, of environmental portraits that Stravin of Stravinsky, of Stravinsky, the whole idea of, of environmental portraits that Arnold Newman was so good at, and what are the elements that make that such an intriguing composition that here we are, you know, 30 something years later, and it's still something I'm very passionate about and I love, and I always go back to that piece. I haven't talked about it on here in a long time. I did in some early videos, but uh, it's still on my mind all the time, and so is Greg. Victor Estrada asks, is photography your true passion? If so, how did you find out and what obstacles did you have to overcome or need to overcome soon to get where you are now and where you want to be? Photography is absolutely my true passion. And if you wanna talk about obstacles, I've done many things in my life, which I am very proud of. I like the fact that I was actually a music major in college and that's what my degree is in. I did photography before then, a little bit in college, and then I came back around to it. and. I've done a wide variety of things for career moves, um, things that I do for day jobs and stuff. And one thing that I learned along the way, and this was an obstacle for me, is that I just, it, client work was not for me. I respect people who do that and I respect people who do that well. It was very difficult for me to have somebody critiquing and telling me how it should be and because they're paying me, I follow along and that was just very unsatisfying for me personally. Now, I'm not saying that that's wrong. This is a very personal thing. I know people out there who shoot weddings and love it. I know people out there who do commercial work and love it. I have nothing but the utmost respect for people who can do that. It wasn't for me. The obstacle that I overcame is that I wanted photography to be very personal um, on an emotional level and an artistic level. And I wanted to find a way of something I could do career-wise that would allow me to pursue it on that level, but didn't involve a client. And when this YouTube channel started, that was the answer. And this is what I do for a living now because I can talk about photography. I love photography. I love sharing it with other people. I love trying to share an enthusiasm with you guys. And so that's what I've found. Now, the reality is, is these days I have to put a lot of time into making videos and stuff, which I love. 
and I'm really trying to find a way to get around that on weekends or whatever to put more time into my own photography. But it has made that much more satisfying to me. And that, I wouldn't say that that's everybody. That's just how I solved that obstacle. I just knew that I love photography, but I wanted to do it on my terms, not somebody else's. And I was just really adamant about that. And it wasn't fun when I was doing work for other people. And so I found a way to do it. You can too. What is your favorite photograph that you have shot from your first day of photography until now? Picking a favorite photograph is difficult because it's like choosing children on one hand and on the other hand, I'm very critical of my own work. And typically after I've made something, I have a period where I can't even look at it because I can't stand it. And then later I can kind of come back and warm up to certain things. And that's just how I operate. Um, I think generally in the entire time that I have shot photos, some of my favorite photos are things that are just kind of, they present themselves. It's more of a street photography approach to improvisation. It's like right place, right time, camera was ready. There's a, a picture that I had that I took in, in London a few years ago. And it was a guy, I was on a train. It stopped at the station. He was standing there reading a newspaper. Door opened, I leaned over and took the shot. I mean, I just saw it was a shot and got it. It wasn't anything that was premeditated. There was another one also, coincidentally from London, of um, these two boys standing in front of me. And, and I was over by Tate Modern on South Bank and it was starting to rain. And I had my Nikon F3 and a roll of HP5 in there, or tri or whatever it was. And so I ducked under the, the overhang to get out of the rain and realized that there was this great scene of people on umbrellas in, in the distance, but these two boys that were silhouetted in front of me. And that was another shot that there's not any really reason I like it. It's just, it works and it was right place, right time. Camera was with me. But if I had to pick one photograph and it's not necessarily maybe aesthetically my favorite picture, but there is a story behind it that means something to me. And this is something I actually had forgotten about this image and I posted it on Instagram fairly recently. And this is um, an image of two kids and they are touching a large sculpture is what this is. And this was my last week at the museum before I left to do this show full time. And I really wasn't, I, I'd wrapped up most of the projects I was working on, but my friend Amanda, who worked at the museum, Amanda Blake, who I think the world of, she's incredible. Um, she, her job was to do programs for people with disabilities. And I always liked working with her on things because it was very moving. It was always very touching. And to see how art was something that could speak over disabilities at times was always amazing to me. We did an Alzheimer's group um, that I helped her with and, and did photographs with um, in, in responding to art. But this last week, she said, I know you're busy. I know you're getting out of there. But she said, I have uh, two groups of kids that are coming in that are blind and they are going to be experiencing works in the sculpture garden. I said, well, of course, anything Amanda does is always fun. So I decided to do this. So um, I went out there and there was something that was, I didn't expect what I was about to see. And I took a bunch of images for her on this. And that was my favorite out of this because there's a giant Ellsworth Kelly sculpture that they have. And these kids can't see but they can get up and they can touch something and they can experience it and they can understand what this is and the shape and watching how kids, and these kids were all, I'm gonna guess between the ages of probably seven to 10 and to see how they were responding with art, even though they were visually impaired. Uh, it's really hard for me to describe to you because it was such a moving experience. Anyway, that story, and I, I realized that when I show that image, you probably don't know the story and just by looking at it, but that's probably what makes that my favorite image because it means something to me. And it was just such an amazing experience doing all that stuff. And it was also emotional because it was my last week at the museum. And that was something that, you know, I did that and I felt like, you know, it's kind of sad to be leaving this finally. I'm interested to know about your presence on Facebook. When so many photographers, at least the ones I follow, seem to be abandoning Facebook, it seems that you have ramped up your presence there. Thoughts? That is a fairly accurate observation because I have increased what I'm doing on Facebook as well as other social platforms. In fact, part of my goal planning for 2017 is to do more with social media. I think it's something that I haven't done enough of in the past. And I understand the frustrations that people have. Um, every now and then you'll hear kind of a grumbling with photographers that don't agree with terms of service or how Facebook treats images or whatever that is and they bail out. And I wanna address this because I think it's very important. And so I'm gonna illustrate a point here. So let's go back 15, 20 years, and let's imagine a world with no social media anymore. So 
get that out of the way. So you as a photographer, as an artist, as a musician, something, somebody who creates something. So you make things. And these are things that you put a lot of passion into. You give a damn. You put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. You work very hard on. And you have things that you make. And you want those to be seen by other people. You want to access an audience somehow because that's where conversations open up. You meet other people who are doing things similar to what you're doing. Um, sometimes people enjoy your work. And I don't care how obscure what you do is, there is an audience out there. Well, now come back to the present day and put social media back into the equation. Well, those are your tools for accessing that audience. This is something we didn't used to have. And I think now that we have it, sometimes people aren't real sure what to do with it sometimes. And I think one way to think of it is like this. People will sign up for social media and they tend to get into one groove or one platform. And so, for instance, somebody who loves to use Facebook, and but they really don't do much on YouTube because they see video and that's where their world is, is it's all, in fact, I know people, their entire world is Facebook. Or maybe people prefer Instagram and they really don't go to Facebook or maybe they don't use Twitter. And the reality is, is that most people find their groove and they get into what they're getting into. Now, from the creative side, and I can tell you from my experience in doing this, is that people do that. And so if I spend all of my time focusing on one platform, then I'm missing out on a potential audience on others. And that does mean more work. It means that you need to actively maintain sometimes three to five social media accounts on different things and actively create content. And it's, it's work. You have to give a damn, but it's there for you, whether you choose to use it or not. Uh, Pat Flynn had this great saying that he used, uh, which was be everywhere. And I couldn't agree with that more. You really do need to be everywhere if you're interested in being successful. Some people aren't, but um, if you are, probably matters. I hope that you guys find this useful. And this Q&A thing, I'm trying to do once a week. And I ask the questions on Facebook because the way they do threading on there makes it very easy to present the question and then have people have answers and it keeps it all kind of organized. And so if you want to participate in something like this and you're on Facebook, make sure you head over and like the Art of Photography page and uh, set your notifications so you'll know when these come out. But I'm doing these about once a week and I answer questions that are asked there. And so anyway, I hope you guys found this useful. I had two other questions on here, but I want to do these in a separate video. So I will put that video up tomorrow and they deal with creating work that matters, which is something I get asked about a lot because I did a video on that a couple months ago. And so I want to get into that as a discussion, but since they're so targeted and that is a big discussion, I want to do that on its own. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking it, sharing it, and as always, subscribe to The Art of Photography so you'll always be up to date on all the latest and greatest videos that we do here. And until the next video where I answer these other two questions, it'll be up tomorrow. I'll see you guys then. Later.